Hi, Doc here with another physics tutorial for Physics 101 Light and Visual Phenomena. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to understand the two types of mirrors we've studied convex, this is the convex one you're looking at here, and the concave to be shown to you shortly, and the two lenses, converging and diverging, so that you can, in a sense, know all aspects about them in terms of image formation. Remember that when you have an optical element we draw a reference line through the center that's the optic axis and we have a focal point which is to the right of a convex mirror and here he has it marked with a red little line capital F and twice the distance away is capital C the center of curvature of the mirror notice he has ray 1 parallel to the axis down here and it reflects as if coming from F he has ray 2 aimed at C, bounce right back, and here's where the two rays appear to come from. He uses green, we use dotted lines in class, and this is therefore a virtual image. He has a third ray which hits the intersection of the mirror and the optic axis. I don't use this ray because I would have to measure these angles, so we'll just ignore that. Notice uh, as we come closer and closer, the, uh, the image gets closer to the mirror from the other side. But let's do all cases. If we take this object and get infinitely far away, notice that my green arrow is real tiny and at F. If I were at infinity, it'd be at F. And as I come in, it marches away from F. As I come in, it grows up. And when it meets the mirror, we're at the same size. And it's right at the mirror with me. So the image goes from F to, you can consider this O, the origin, where the mirror intersects the optic axis, O. So it goes from F to O. Marvelous little applet by Dr. Huang here, who teaches in Taiwan. He's a computer programmer and physicist. Marvelous. We can see all the cases. We're infinitely far away. We're a tiny little arrow. And as we get closer and closer, we grow up to the same size. When we touch, all the images are virtual. They're all upright. They're all smaller, except for when I touch the mirror. And they're trapped between F and O. The Escher, marvelous work, where it's so accurate, it's what would happen if you actually held a globe in your hand. The images are small because the objects are far away. But notice that when you get close to the uh, globe, like when you touch it, you're then the same size. The same thing that we saw earlier. The farther you're away from the globe, the smaller you're going to shrink. But when you get closer and closer, you grow up. Your image grows up to be the same size as you when you touch the mirror and the image is at the surface. We're going to see that the diverging lens, which we're going to go to next, is analogous to this. And if you understand the convex mirror, you basically understand the diverging lens. So let's do that. If we go to the diverging lens, we're going to see that the diverging lens makes small images also. And what I like to do with mirrors is I like to think of a mirror and lens as having positive and negative space, where the positive space is common sense, is where light wants to go. Where does light want to go with a mirror? wants to reflect. It wants to, wants to stay on the left side. It's not going to go to the right. It could be a medicine cabinet here. So this is like negative space. And to the left is positive space. The image for this kind of mirror, convex, is always in negative space. It goes from F to the mirror, between F and O. That's where it's trapped. And when you go to the lens, for a lens, positive space, well, this is glass. So where does light want to go? It wants to go through the glass. So positive space is to the right. Negative space for the lens is to the left. So if that's the case, notice that the uh, image is trapped between the focal point on the left side and the lens. It's very similar to the convex uh, mirror, trapped between F and the optical element. And guess what? Look at this. Grow up from a zero height. It grows up. And when I touch the optical element, it's the same size. And in this case, it's trapped between F and the lens. It's between me and the lens. But the very, very similar physics, F to O. You call this O where the optic axis intersects the optical element from F to O in negative space. And that's what happens here. The piano is smaller. 
And notice that when I touch uh, the optical element, that's when the size of the image is the same size, kind of analogous over here where Escher is touching the globe. So there you have it, a nice comparison of these two optical elements. Marching in from infinity, we grow up from zero height to our normal regular height. When we touch, touch the uh, optical element, same thing happens with the mirror from F, the same size when we touch the mirror. Okay, now it's time to go to the other type of mirror, the concave uh, mirror. And for the concave mirror, we have this is F on the left hand side. Notice that the focal point here is in positive space. Our images on the left side are, good, are real. That's where light really goes. Uh, for a mirror, you can remember that. If you're on the left side as an image, you are real. If you're on the right side, you're in negative space, you're virtual, and you're going to be upright for these cases where the optical elements are arranged vertically. And I'm standing up, uh, pointing up north. So here, I have the center of curvature. I have C. I have capital C. I have capital F. And here you can imagine capital O for origin. And here I have three regions. I could be to the left of C. I could be between C and F, and I could, I could be between F and O. Three different things will happen. When I'm to the left of C, my image is smaller, real, and inverted. When I'm at C, I'm the same size and inverted, and something then changes when I come over here, I'm bigger. So when I'm between C and F, I'm larger. Notice that if I start out way at infinity, I'm a real tiny little arrow, real and upside down. And if I were able to get to infinity, I would be at zero height at F. As I walk in, the image grows up from F to C. And right here at C, click. This is where I'm at the same size. So as I walk from infinity to C, the image goes from F, grows up to the same size, real and inverted. When I cross over, I'm then as an image larger and when I'm trapped between C and F larger and larger look you can't even see it here far away to the left and larger it runs off to infinity get larger and larger and when I reach F the rays do not meet either to the left or appear to meet to the right I'm in sort of nowhere land here I'm in a boundary mysterious boundary as if the the image that was real and upside down you know far away to the left is somehow meeting the infinity to the right and a marvelous transformation occurs when I cross over. The rays appear to come from the right, like infinitely large. See, infinitely large, can't say it, but as you get closer and closer, it shrinks down. This is the makeup mode and makeup mirror mode. You know, I'm seeing myself larger, and then when I touch the mirrors, same idea as before, same size, and right at the surface of the mirror. So let's do that again. Infinitely far away, I'm going to start out real tiny at F right there infinitely far away and as I march in as I am going in from infinity to C this little image goes from F to C and meets me at C it meets me at C same size upside down then when I cross into this region between C and F the image is like I trade places now the image is where I was before you know to the left of C and as I approach F it runs out to infinity kind of like like where I was before and then when I'm at the focal point, undefined, the rays don't meet. But then when I cross into the third region, if this is called region one, two, and three, third region, then the image is virtual, upright, and larger, makeup mirror. And then when I touch, same size. So let's look at that uh, with the uh, observation. That was the theory. Now for the observation, here's the concave mirror. I'm far away from it, so I am upside down and I'm smaller. Same with the grand piano. In fact, the grand piano is even farther away than I am, so it's going to be sh even smaller, you know, proportionally, because it's farther away. So that's the first case. I'm to the left of C, and the images are real, inverted, and smaller. Now, this ball here is between C and F, so its image is larger and this larger image is uh, inverted, although you can't tell because the ball is you know, symmetrical. And this is our second case. Notice that you have objects here far away. The skylight's in my kitchen area, dining area, and a shelving uh, 
shelves over here in, in set into the wall and these are inverted they're upside down that's the ceiling what's it doing down on the, on the bottom of the floor that because it's inverted it's upside down and notice that they're smaller these are big windows uh, skylights and they're and they're quite small so these are in region one you know to the left of c and therefore they're small while the ball is between c and f so we then have the larger image real and when we get closer we have a makeup mirror between f and the mirror is larger and since this picture was taken from the side we have some off-axis aberration and distortion of the face so there you have it the three cases that correspond to the three cases here to the left of c between c and f and makeup mirror mode and guess what the lens acts in a very very similar way the converging lens has three regions a region here where we're smaller a region when we're larger and a region when we have like a makeup mirror a magnifying glass so we have like two larger cases like we had before a larger inverted and a larger upright here is where this twice the focal distance which would be called c for a mirror concave mirror is very important even though this is not called c we want to keep it there analogous to c twice as far from the lens as the focal point so here is o for origin here is f capital f for focal point and here is twice the focal distance away which we can think of as our like a c so if i'm to the left of c notice that my image if i to the left of c will be trapped between uh, the focal point and the corresponding C you know point on the other side because with lenses you have F's on either side so you have the pair of points markers on either side and remember that for the lens this is positive space and our real images are in positive space for both the mirror concave mirror and for the lens I start off at infinity I'm real tiny at F on the other side of the mirror in the positive space side and if I walk march in I get bigger and bigger and bigger and when I'm here click I'm the same size upside down this is analogous to being twice as far with a concave mirror where I was upside down twice as far on the positive side of the mirror was to the left but for the lens is to the right and then when I go between C and F I have a inverted an inverted real image that's larger and when I meet reach rather this f um parallel rays i'm in nowhere land nothing meets on the right nothing appears to me on the left but if i should mysteriously you know go one step further it's it's as if this image it's upside down almost well it would let's say if i step if i step a, a you know zillionth of an inch or something you know to the left this is now upside down zillions of miles away kilometers away whatever and inverted and large and here if i step a little bit in like this i have a magnifying glass where this uh, image is really large to the left so right at this point here i am transforming from a larger real image that you see on the right to a magnifying glass effect where i have a larger image that is virtual in negative space for the lens so you have the three uh, similar uh, situations so if we go back to the observations uh, in real life we see that if you're far from the concave mirror you're smaller real inverted and since this deck is far from the uh, lens uh, the deck is inverted and smaller and if your ball is between C and F it's larger and real and inverted and if your wizard should be between f and twice the distance away analogous to c it's upside down and larger just like that ball image there the wizard and then if we are to go between f and the optical element it's either makeup mirror time or magnifying glass time the images are virtual they're upright and they're larger so by looking at these analogies here you can really master the all cases of each of the elements the two lenses and the two mirrors and i hope that'll give you a lot of confidence when you go in and take the exam signing off for now doc i hope you enjoyed the review